Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to a brand new game which just came out a couple of days ago on Steam called We the Revolution. This is an interesting game uh, developed by a studio called Polyslash and published by uh, a publisher named Claybater. Uh, this is a game that puts you in the shoes of a French judge during revolutionary France during the terror, or at least the start of the terror appears to be when this is occurring, and we have to navigate the politics of the revolution, sort of trying to please the common people, the revolutionaries. We also have to navigate the politics of our family, our uh, older son who is a revolutionary, our younger son son uh, who is uh, just kind of has uh, loves me as the father, uh, our wife, and then our father who is more of a common folk person, uh, all while trying to uh, sort of climb our way to the top of French revolutionary politics and perhaps unseat Robespierre, uh, but we'll see. Uh, this is part three of a series that's looking at this game. Uh, in our last video, we had kind of an uncomfortable trial of an accused rapist, but also hero of the revolution. And uh, in this trial, we'll see how things progress. But let's jump back in and see how uh, how we do. Due to the establishment of a revolution revolutionary tribunal, we need to prepare an official stamp. I was told to ask you, citizen, because President Devonet is indisposed. How much did he drink? He was not able to say, shall we? All right, so we get to build our own crest, folks, uh, which is kind of what we sign all the documents with. So you can see here we can kind of go through these different icons. I like the sort of olive leaves over the top. It has kind of a Roman look to it. If there's an eagle, I would love that. Oh, this is Romanesque. Romanesque. I mean, honestly, I'm not really a big artist. That looks good to me. Courthouse, oak leaves on the top, something similar on the bottom. Okay. So we got our symbol. And now we have to choose uh, what we're going to do. So our youngest son, uh, we can work on tomorrow's trial, which potentially impacts everybody. Open night at the theater. Uh, there's a good chance to take a breather from reality. Political debate. Everybody with a wife. Evening with Grandfather. Evening stroll. Take your family for an evening stroll around Paris. It will let your father stretch his old bones a little. Let's do that. Oh, my old father is not super happy. I think that's my father. Everybody else in my family, though, very much happy. So now we have positive influence on the revolutionaries, which is our older son. And uh, the uh, love of our younger son and our wife even likes us a little bit more. I have not guillotined anyone, no name, not yet. Tragically, we are losing control of the streets. People feel betrayed by the king, and some believe him to be a spy trying to elude justice. Special means are recommended when suppressing unrest. We only need an opinion from the judges to make sure we are working legally. This is Matthew uh, Burrell. He is the commander of the National Guard in France and in charge of security for the revolution. In other words, you need the blessings to shoot at protesters. People can't control their emotions and are hurting other citizens as a result. Look at the windows. Next time, they might do something worse than just throw rocks. It pains us to see unrest growing in the streets of Paris. Commander-in-Chief Burrell has informed us that the Guard is no longer able to control the situation through peaceful means. It is recommended that he be allowed to use more immediate methods to protect the innocent civilians, but would like to know the Tribunal's opinion on the matter. I approve the National Guard's ruling... So we can either accept or decline. Is there a way to, like, back out? I want to see, like... Do we want to use violence against the protesters? That's going to piss off a lot of people if we just start mowing people down. So I think we're not going to give him permission to kill people. I don't want to just start murdering people. Authority should not use force against the people. If it has to, it is already lost. I... Do not approve this decree. Stamp. The judge will not be the person the people see as responsible for the execution of citizens. Without this document, we can only wait for the citizens of Paris to start killing each other before our very eyes. I hope you know what you're doing. The convention may have issued the decree, but I have no doubt it was Robespierre's idea. Okay, so maybe we're making an enemy of Robespierre. 
The mob wanted to act both as judge and jury again and hang people from the street lamps. Poor Pochard was almost hanged. Pochard? Claude Pochard? Exactly, the beloved tutor of your Friedrich. You had to dismiss him after the incident with an oath of the clergy, did you not? Yes, Friedrich tells me from time to time that he misses his teacher. What are you doing? The trial's about to begin. It's about Monsieur Picard. <laughs> I can't do a child accent. News travels fast. He's been accused of counter-revolutionary activities. You know it can't be true. It's not so simple. Leave before somebody hears us. Papa, please. Go home. Uh, okay, talk to the family for once. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, current situation. We've got Burrell and David between us and Robespierre. Um, do we have any indications of any... What are notifications here? Good relationship with the son, elder, and younger sons. Somewhat uh, aghast himself. Your elder son is warming to you. It's giving us a revolutionary endorsement of plus one. Revolutionary's opinion of us is currently low, but the common folk think very highly of us. Um, and then the jury does not like us. We've acquitted two people. We've sent one person to prison so far. Is there anything else? One of us. Okay, so that was marching in the streets. You can see all these different actions. Day three was a good day for us all around. And... Okay. Um, I thought there was something about, like... If there were rivalries that we had detected, but apparently not. Family wants to acquit him. Revolutionaries want to send him to prison. Common folk want to execute this individual. Now remember, he was our uh, tutor, I believe. Monsieur Le Judge, you know me. State your personal information or there will be consequences. Claude Pochard, uh, Monsieur Le Judge. You stand accused of spying for the counter-revolutionaries and criticizing the existing order to admit these crimes. I am innocent. The accusation is exaggerated and comes from the ill will of the accusers. Suggesting that the revolutionary government is acting in ill will, typical of a priest. Now, just as sort of a reminder, folks, during the French Revolution, there was very much an anti-religion element of the French Revolution. And the common folks and the revolutionaries were, there was almost like a little mini purge of the clergy from French society. Uh, the French Catholic Church had w held substantial influence over France during the reign of Louis and the monarchy. And there was a backlash against it by the people during the revolution. The revolution, in many ways, was a secularist, anti-religion movement, at least for periods of the revolution. Uh, things kind of tapered out a bit toward the end. But the church lost a lot of their property and land stripped from them during the revolution. And many clergymen were imprisoned. And I think some were executed as well, although, again, I'm not an expert on the, the revolution itself. Um, let's see... So what's the case file? Compiled by Nathan D. Arasov. He's accused of counter-revolution and treason. Claude Prochard, a 26-year-old vicar and tutor, son of a cobbler, believes in enlightenment ideals. After refusing to adjure the civil constitution of the clergy, he was removed from his parish, prohibited from carrying out his duties, and sentenced to banishment. Despite this, he stayed in Paris and continued his work as a tutor, which he started before 1789. Pichard was captured in the streets by fortuitous or fortuitous circumstances. A guard officer present or a guard officer present during his trial a few months ago recognized him and didn't hesitate to act. Following an investigation, Pichard was accused of spying and spreading counter-revolutionary propaganda in order to prepare a foreign intervention that would end the revolution. Correspondence with Archbishop Bishop Jean Arson, the uh, Bretelou, was found in a room Pichard had been renting from Mary Gimmet. In it, the clergyman asked for information about the unrest and the supporters of the monarchy in hiding. Riches were also found, a golden chalice and a re reliquary. Uh, moreover, the director of one of the orphanages, Claude Todden, testifies that the tutor would question the law of the revolution in front of his students, stating that it was less important than the laws handed down by God. Evidence, a letter to Claude Pochard. Okay, so parish priest, you are, I guess that's... Offender's personality? Yes, it is. Uh, banishment. Uh, banishment? Course of events? Yes. Tudor. Kind of is counter-revolutionary, right? No? Tudor offender's personality? Yes. Espionage. That's an accusation. Spreading propaganda. That's also an accusation. 
It could also be counter-revolutionary. Church riches, that's evidence. And a letter from the Archbishop, that's also evidence. Wow, that one was pretty easy to go through. All right, so there's all these different things, and now I think we need to think strategically about how we want this to go. Uh, our family wants to acquit. Nobody else does, but the risk, obviously, is we don't want to piss our family off. Now, the good news is our older son and our younger son are both on our side in general. They're both very positive of us. Our father, less so, and our wife, much less so. The question is, do we want to please the wife, or how do we want to manage that? Um, why did the accused uh, stay in France despite being banished? Uh, that would lead to execution desires. The accused travels extensively around uh, the Paris department. To what end? What do you teach? What information did the accused manage to convey to the archbishop? Summon the witness. Uh, what stipend does the accused receive as a treasurer or teacher? Why did the accused continue teaching instead of leaving France? And did the accused celebrate masses despite the ban? So these are all the different questions that we can ask. Uh, who wants him killed again? The common folk want him killed. The, ex the revolutionaries want him or imprisoned. If we kill him, the common folk's opinion goes way up. The revolutionaries actually don't want us to use the guillotine yet. Prison, on the other hand, would cause the common folk to drop a bit and the revolutionaries to increase slightly. An acquittal will make everybody less happy, uh, except for our family. Um, so yeah, we'll, see. we'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, all right, so let's see here. I don't even know where to start. I guess we can start with what do you teach? The caregivers and orphanages only pay for readings and writing lessons. So why did the accused teach children that God's law stands above the Republic? You spread counter-revolutionary superstition and propaganda. The misunderstanding the children I teach are unable to understand such complicated matters. The accused explains further incriminates himself. If they are unable to understand the topic, why would he even discuss it at all? The church spreads ignorance and takes our money. I was only answering questions from the director of the orphanage in Gomas. I said that God's law stood above my banishment. It is God's law that prohibits me from leaving the country. I have a duty to help those in need. Okay. Um. Yeah, imprisonment probably seems like the best option. We probably piss our family off slightly less. We please the revolutionaries who hate us the most. And then we only mildly upset the common folk. That's probably the direction we want to go. So let's go ahead and ask you a question about why he didn't leave when he was banished. He had to take care of his sick mother. Without me, she would surely have died. Why did you not take her with you? Make the filth squirm. I was in no position to afford that. I'm a poor parish priest who is unable to even carry out his duties. I have to teach every single day to survive. Uh, is that why you started spying? <laughs> wow! That's a bit of an accusation there from the prosecutor. Uh, what could I gain? The, uh, the supposed prosecution of priests, the main argument of Archbishop Bertou, and the pious fourth are convinced the Catholic monarchs to strike against the revolution. I do not correspond with emigres, and I certainly do not write about the suffering of our clergymen. We have the evidence. Away with the liar! Alright, so people want to uh, send him to prison now. Do we have... Oh, here's the letter. Dear Claude, remember to stay strong in your faith and, comp and complete your duties with dignity. Tell me how our brothers in faith are doing as well as the church in these desperate times. May God protect you, Sean Arson. Um, let's see here. Uh, what do you receive as a teacher? Two francs a week, but most people give me food instead, bread, butter, sometimes wine. Does it not bother you that poor people have to take food from their children to give it to you? Of course it bothers me, but I have to eat too. He keeps gold under his bed and still takes food from the poor. We demand an explanation. Where does the gold come from? Is it not from your fellow conspirators abroad? Of course not. It belongs to the parish in Compons, which is currently under my care. This gold is not my property. All right, so where are we at here? What valuables were seized from the defendant? Do we get that? Is there a question I can ask that'll get us that? Um, maybe the witness can tell us. What's your name? Mary Gimmett, Monsieur Le Judge. Was the witness aware that she was renting a room to an unsworn Catholic priest? Did the accused maintain extensive correspondence? Which one? Meaning, did he receive many letters? I don't remember any letters with his name. Perhaps he had a rich social life. Did he entertain many guests? I don't remember anyone visiting him at all. He was always there most of the time anyway. He just used the room to sleep. Where would he go? Don't ask my guests questions about that. 
Did he pay his rent on time? Sometimes I'd have him to threaten to kick him out, but eventually he'd always pay. No, he lived like a poor man. I mean, a normal fellow would never get rich from teaching. Okay. So that actually dropped the desire for execution. What was the evidence again? What did they seize? Riches. Church riches. Well, we asked, but it didn't. I didn't get information about what he actually had. Um. Did I miss something, guys? What was the actual... What did we take from him? Let's see. Did he defend... I would say no, he didn't confess to the crime. What did he convey to the Archbishop? None. I have no connection with the Archbishop. Why would he be interested in the parish priest's help? What about your letter? We have it in our files. You received instructions from the Archbishop. A simple letter, not instructions, and it's from the Archbishop, but from my parish priest and compons. Where is he now? I, I know only that he planned to leave for Switzerland. He may have changed his mind. That is why I never thought to respond to the letter. What a coincidence. Currently resides in Switzerland. Indeed, concern my clan. Any clergyman reside in Switzerland. Well, now everybody wants to kill him. So I think we'll ask a question to kind of remove the execution from the jury. Back to imprisonment. We'll ask one more question to bring the jury down a bit. Gold abroad. He travels around to France. Spying people. The only money comes into my students, caregivers. Not that amounts at all. So where did the riches come from? There were literal equipments. I saved... Oh, this answers the question. From plunder in the church. I would rather go hungry than them. Fanatic thief. Peddler of superstition. So they were... Uh... Per, a procession cross and stoop? What did you save? Only money C. Chalice and Requiem. Okay. He can, did not confess to the crimes. Gold chalice and reliquary. When and where did the defendant corrupt the people of Paris? During reading and writing lessons in an orphanage? That was my understanding. Okay, so the jury wants prison. The revolutionaries want prison. My family wants acquittal, but I'll, I don't think I want acquittal. I'll have to upset my family somewhat to make the revolutionaries more happy and kind of bring things more into balance. Also, it'll make the jury like me more. So we need to try and win back the faith of the jury. So we'll go ahead and do that. You, sir, are going to prison, but don't worry, friend. I didn't kill you. He saved the priest. I didn't show mercy. The revolutionaries said they wanted him in prison. What are you talking about? Uh, plus two reputation and influence. The jury doesn't apparently have any influence on the jury. Plus two influence points. Plus two reputation. Plus five revolutionaries. Minus six common folk. I don't know if this changes my relationship with the jury at all. Two days left for the enemy at the courthouse. So the jury will only be our enemy for two more days. And then those penalties will go away. Walking down the street, chilling, reading my book, drinking my beer. Oh boy. Not every day you see feet hanging from the ceiling. And someone just punched my book out of my hand and ran away. What a jerk. He's hung. Traitor. Did we know that guy? I don't think so. Or was he our judge friend? I don't think so. What the hell? 
blood? Oh my god. One fool. <laughs> the other fired a musket. They fought for freedom. Oh my god. Everybody's dead. The man who was forbidden to shoot. Commander Duel paid the highest price <laughs> for our decisions. The defender who kept watch over ordinary citizens, but was denied the right to protect himself. Whether I like it or not, his hmm. death is also my fault. I feel no guilt. Burrell was between me and the crown. <laughs> oh my god. We made a nice profit. There was a chance of prosperity. Why would Renard family want to take over your shop, Grandpa? For profit and power, it's always the same and no different in these times. Today is about equality, so that not only the aristocrats can live with dignity. Grow up, boy! I only saw the truth when they attempted to sentence my son, your uncle, to death. It suddenly dawned on me that the only thing that mattered were power I had never had, and the connections I never cared for. You want to be righteous while the injustice spreads like a plague? You should not be sorry for that. I am not, but I would rather your brother lived so that I still had two sons. So my brother got killed? He died a long time ago, before you were born. Why did he die? Silence. Do not talk so much, son! <laughs> Your uncle went to war and died in battle. Your generation will soon realize the extent of the damages we inflicted upon the world. In the past, decent people like Pichard never had to worry about courts or tribunals. But now, do you even consider the possibility that Pichard was guilty? No, not Mr. Pichard. He was no guiltier than any of us, son. Keep an eye on the Renards. Okay. So our father likes us less. And apparently our father is an influence of the people. Everybody likes us less because we imprisoned him. Our youngest son, though, still likes us very much. Uh, we can work on tomorrow's trial. I'll unlock one more question to affect in court. Political debate. It's time for grown men to talk about the revolution's achievements. Play time with the children! Uh, viola Concerto... Evening gambling. You should spend some time with your father every now and then. Show him your world. Perhaps he will get a taste for it. I like playtime with the children. Or the viola concerto. Mm. We're going to go gambling, Papa. Sorry, son. Sorry, wife. Sorry, youngest son. Apparently my youngest son doesn't care that I went gambling. Okay, he just loves me unconditionally. He's awesome. We like him. Everybody press F for Burrell. Good relations with the younger son. Reputation is negative five. Why did I lose negative five reputation? Why'd my reputation go down? Oh, enemy at the courthouse. But that'll go away in a few days, right? One more day till that's gone. Okay. Influence points, negative one. New income cycle. Enemy at the courthouse. Okay. Revolutionaries, negative two. Common folk, negative two. So I think that's all to do with the enemy in the courthouse. So this person, the revolutionaries want to acquit, and the common folk want us to execute. Well... We'll have to see how this plays out. Meanwhile, the hierarchy has changed. Burrell is dead. <laughs> oh, big X. <sighs> um, David is still our friend, and he's sort of on our level. And we've uncovered Elliot and Roland, the Minister of Internal Affairs, thanks to his resource resourceful wife, who controls his career from the shadows. He has gained a position in the government and become a prominent member of the Gorgonards. He does not hide his support of the monarchy, maintaining that... It will create a balance between the bloody revolution and the tradition that unites French generations. 
Elliot, a courtesan known in every nook of Paris that is worth mentioning. A lady of leisure, born in Scotland and living in Paris, is an alleged spy for the English. In order to survive, she has been forced to master diplomacy like one of the deputies of the National Convention. There is no doubt that her professional her, her profession has helped save her relationships. It is unofficially said that if an aristocrat wants to escape from Paris, then Grace Elliot is the one to speak to. Okay. Um, who's the accused? The people are angry and scared and expect someone to be punished for this tragedy. Your name? Maurice Lorty, Monsieur Judge. Did you build the house? That's right, I've earned my living from construction and renovation for many years now. Did the floor collapse because of your mistake? I don't know, I've worked at many houses since then. Those children are dead because of you! Let me just say that I always build the best work I can. Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, this individual is accused of murder. A tragedy occurred in one of the tenements by the Seine, near the Point Neuf. The fourth floor collapsed. The tenants, horrified by the crash and ubiquitous dust, ran outside. Only after a few minutes did some of the braver men run upstairs to look for the survivors and remove the corpses. Rubble and timber buried two families with 12 people. Three children managed to survive by hiding beneath a wooden table. Neighbors dug them out and carried them to the Hotel Du. We cannot comprehend what the orphans are going through, and they have not eaten or spoken for two days. Okay. The owner of the house has testified that he had ordered the construction of an extra floor a few years back. Work was supervised by architect Maurice Lorty. The National Guard found the architect, uh, who was also uh, the construction foreman at the address given by the owner. Maurice Lorty was not surprised when the gendarmes knocked at his door, and he did not resist when they handcuffed him and took him to jail. So this individual is the architect of a building which collapsed and killed 12 people. Is he negligent, and should we kill him? Well, let's see what our questions are. A collapsed floor. I think that's the course of events. We can only get one mistake, though. Corpses. It's not really extenuating circumstances. They're the victims. Crowded flat. Is that extenuating circumstances? Yes. And then an additional four. Lore, that's the course of events. Well, that was easy enough to get all the questions undone. A few years ago, were you signed to perform some construction work? Well, citizen, with your knowledge of construction, what could have led to this tragedy? Can't be sure. Pests, poor materials, too much load on the structure. Every house is different. This should have been checked before the room fell on people's heads. You did not mention a construction error. Yes, unfortunately, that can also happen. I could have made a mistake in my calculations or wrongly assessed the quality of the timber. You're not denying it? If you, if you judge that I have contributed to the death of those children, I will accept whatever punishment you choose. Two weeks ago, a disease took my wife, and I no longer care what happens to me. Okay. Did you talk to the tenants? They came to me in the night, angry and hurt. I understood their pain. I, too, have children. Did you talk to them? No, I was forced to hide inside my house and close the window shutters because they were throwing stones. So the building collapsed because of your mistake and you did not even... What an asshole prosecutor. Yeah, they were throwing stones at you. I'm a coward, I know. How did they know where to go? Only the owner of the address tenement knew of me. Uh, protocol. Who was the counter-revolutionary... Was this an act of counter-revolutionary nature? No. Uh, was the scope of the construction work performed by the architect? Uh, construction of another floor. According to the witnesses, what did the tenants complain about? Anything? Squeaky floors. I, I mean, I don't know this, but I think this. I also don't want to piss the jury off. He didn't match on rats or humidity. Well, let's see. It was nine years ago. I was supposed to remove the roof and add one floor. I built him a new roof. It is known to be easier than build a new... Uh, if he did, I wouldn't have made as many corrections as necessary. What floor was built by you? The fourth, before that, the third was the attic. That didn't change anyone's opinion, apparently. Call a witness. Ooh, this guy looks serious. Are you the owner of the house when the floor collapsed? Yes, the floor of the attic collapsed and fell on the rooms below. Did the tenants complain about anything ahead of the tragedy? They said sometimes about squeaky floors, but that's not unusual, so they squeak at my place too, so what? I planned to, but the tragedy happened before I was able to. Thank God he managed to take their money. <laughs> okay. All right, that apparently didn't change anyone's opinion. The jury still wants a death penalty. The common folk want death penalty. The revolutionaries want acquittal. Well, I didn't plan this well. 
I have no more questions to ask. They did complain of squeaky floors. So our assessment there is complete. <sighs> well, I feel bad. Because I don't really think he deserves to die. But the jury wants to kill him. What do you guys say? Vote in the chat. If you think I should kill him, press F. Prison makes the common folk... Actually, prison makes the common folk happy and the revolutionaries less unhappy. Acquittal makes the revolutionaries happy. Eh. Prison is actually the least bad option here. Because we don't really need the super high opinion of the common folk. And it makes the death penalty people less upset. Press F if you want me to kill him. Charcoal, that's not very revolutionary in nature of you. Feeling bad for the defendant. Prison was slightly less happy. Uh, rep common folk. Revolutionaries are... Or sorry, slightly less unhappy revolutionaries. Slightly happier common folk. Acquittal is much happier revolutionaries and much less happy uh, common folk. Death penalty is sort of the extreme. So prison's sort of the hedge. I just want to try out the guillotine, guys. Um, and the jury also votes for death penalty. I'm going with death penalty mainly because of the jury. I kind of forgot about this. The jury has one more day of not trusting me, and there are pretty big penalties against me for having the jury not trust me. So given the jury's opinion is execution, that's where I'm going to go with. We're going to see the guillotine in action, folks. Get ready. Are you ready? Architect Lorty shall be sent to the guillotine for the terrible, tragic death of two families. Long live justice. All right, so influence is up two. Reputation is up two. The jury is happy. All of our report is correct. And away he goes to the guillotine to be killed. Maybe I could win the heart of the crowd. The guillotine. Earn favor with the crowd by delivering a speech or proceed directly to the execution. Remember, once you start your speech, there's no going back. An awkward or clumsy speech will earn you nothing but ridicule from the audience. Depending on your reputation, the crowd will be more or less aggressive. Let's give a speech to the common folk. Strategy. Building. Before attempting uh, persuasion, you may explore different approaches to all the topics of the conversation. After employing every kind of emotion, you will receive an evaluation of your choices. Okay, so we can go with these four different approaches. Uh, each attribute comes with a set of emotions that can have a positive and negative impact. Learn their effects to manipulate the people of Paris in any way you please. Ooh, we're going to be a public orator now. The higher your reputation, the more you know about the other speakers' attitudes. You can also obtain information by spending influence points. So if we go with... Carelessness, aggression for the revolution, and humility? A very weak argument. How do I, can I change this? So we should go with a perfect argument for the crime. We probably shouldn't go with humility for the defendant. Maybe carelessness as well. I guess I thought I could undo. Is there no way to go back? I thought there was a way to go back. Uh, for the conviction here, killing was as easy as breathing. That's how guillotine is to us. Guillotine is as easy as breathing? What? Um, the defendant... Aggression. Murderers, traitors, deceivers, you have... Whatever. Uh, and then aggression... For the revolution. Those who oppose the republic. Blah, blah, blah. 
Crowd doubtful. Reputation negative one. Apparently my speech was not very inspiring. Is this justice? Will someone punish the owner of the house? Oh boy! Pull the rope! Pull the rope and perform the execution. Wow! We just killed someone! Wow. The guillotine has tasted blood. And yours truly, Justice THG. Why am I talking about myself in the third person? I don't know. But I have also sent a man to his death for my own political gain. Someone that probably didn't deserve it. So that's probably a slippery slope we're headed <laughs> down and full swing, just sprinting down that hill for political gain uh, without any moral scruples. Um, but anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Pretty interesting episode there. We got to see the first use of the guillotine, some new mechanics of the game sort of revealed itself. And I think the next episode will have some other interesting elements that come into play, uh, but we'll leave that for then. Until next time, though, guys, as always, please feel free to leave your comments below and let me know your thoughts. Until next time, the Historical Gamer, once again, I'm saying thank you for listening and watching, and until next time, I'm out.